literary discussion with Lisa M. Kendrick about There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury is one of America's best-known science fiction and fantasy writers. His most chilling stories comment on the human consequences of progress. He has said that science ran too far ahead of us too quickly and the people got lost in a mechanical wilderness. Bradbury has lived to see some of his frightening concerns become fact. Writers must make choices about how to organize events in a story. The most straightforward way of structuring a story is to describe events in chronological order, which is the sequence in which events occur. Writers most often use words like today, tomorrow, before, next, and last to help with this sequential order. This story is even more specific. Drawing conclusions helps us understand a story. A conclusion is a judgment based on evidence in the story and your own knowledge. We should use the following thoughts to think about as we read this story. The details about the family and their routine, details around the house, and changes in the house. We receive hints in the descriptions in the very first few paragraphs of this story that things are not as they should be. This foreshadows a dark direction. We know in the beginning that there is no one in the house slamming doors or walking on the carpets, heading to school or work. The garage door opens, waiting for someone to get into the car, but no one ever does. Halfway through the morning, we know enough about the situation to be able to take some guesses about the setting. This is a futuristic society that prizes technology as a way of eliminating chores and making day-to-day -day life of the average family easier and more convenient. The nature of the devices like automatic self-cleaning sink and robotic cleaning mice suggest that this society values cleanliness and order. Once the house has reached noon, we've been given a great deal more evidence about what has happened. It is obvious through hints and descriptions that the house and the surrounding city have suffered an atomic blast. Silhouettes are all that remain of the family members who lived in that house. A clear juxtaposition between the living and a computer is the very chilling scene of the dog. The dog is in a frenzy, dying and alone. He searches in vain for the family. He's lured toward the kitchen by the smell of pancakes and then perishes at the door. While the house continues mindlessly on its automated course, cleaning up the mud, oblivious to the dog's plight. The nursery is definitely the most nature-based room in the house, and an entire scenario appears on a wall of different ecosystems in the world. The nursery's furnishings suggest that there are young children in the family. There's a recreation of that nature that I discussed. It's obvious that the family appreciates nature, but are more accustomed to experience it through technology rather than firsthand experience. Bradbury has interwoven a poem by poet Sarah Teasdale. He has used it as his title, as well as had the house read it to the absent family. The theme is ever present and punches readers right in the face here. The idea that nature will persist, even if humans destroy one another through war and every other living thing will go on as if nothing has ever happened. The house's faculties disintegrate as the fire burns stronger and stronger, and this is easily and beautifully paired with language that shows the house devolving. This leads us with the conclusion that technology in itself is powerful but mindless. It must be controlled through human effort and used wisely. It could not be blindly depended upon, and technology could neither save the house nor can it save mankind.